Land of the Lustrous uses its medium to create something truly impressive. Something I'd go as far as to call a masterpiece. Now, I haven't done a lot of work in 3D modeling, just enough to know that A, it's a pain, and B, I suck at it really, really badly. Still, the experience helped me to appreciate Land of the Lustrous for the well-crafted anime that it is, in a much deeper light than I would without that experience. Land of the Lustrous isn't just good at using its medium, its entire existence is enwrapped in it. Hello, nerds of the internet, Gala Geek here at your service, and today I'm taking a step back to look at an anime I consider to be one of, if not the best, anime of 2017. Okay, let's talk about its concept and story, and yes, there will be spoilers, but I'll let you know when you can skip so you don't have to be spoiled. In my opinion, the idea of anthropomorphic gems is a neat one. It leads to an interesting outlook on humanity and life in general. The gems can't die, they live forever, however, if they're shattered, their parts and existence is separated with those parts. The show also dives into one's purpose in life. What and who we want to be. A topic that hits really close to home for me as I try to figure out life. The show also discusses change. Nothing stays the same in this world, and sometimes the changes won't be for the best, and that's okay. It also explores unspoken trust, betrayal, and the importance of memories. I'll be honest, you don't go into this show for the plot. It's a simple setup that follows Foss's everyday life for a year as she tries to find a new job for Cinnabar. It is the only string that ties these 12 episodes together, as the characters go through, well, massive change. No, this show is meant to be an experience. Now, this is where I'm going to go into spoilers, so feel free to skip to the time code on the screen. Okay, everybody gone? Last shot. Okay, let's start with the episode Diamond. This is when I realized this anime wasn't going for a hard-told story, but wanting to wrap you in its existence. The scene where Dia is running across the sky, I know you've seen it, everybody has, wants you to forget about everything around you. It wants you to forget you're watching an anime, and it wants you to feel the wind and smell the grass. It wants you to forget the urgency of the story and experience what's going on around you. And the show is full of scenes like this. If they were cut, there'd be very little script change, but a massive, massive tone shift. And while that's where I saw it, the show also does this in episode 1, when Cinnabar and Foss are attacked. They don't want you to think. This show wants you to feel. And that's not to say there aren't spectacular moments in storytelling, either. In the episode Soul, Flesh, Bone, the overarching mystery of the show begins to unravel, as we find out that different groups are meant to be different parts of humans that used to roam the world. Then there's my favorite moment. <laughs> well, this one. The show is packed with stuff like this. Of course, there is one thing I don't care for, and that's how jarring Phosphilite's transition is in episode 9. It was just so jarring. So much that I initially had trouble getting through the episode. But in hindsight, I can see the intentions behind it, and the commentary it creates about how creatures change with experience. 
still, I had grown to know Foss for eight episodes, and who she was changed very drastically. It wasn't until I had time to process what had happened and accept it that I realized that this move was intentional on the writer's part, showing just how drastically everything can change in just a single event. Still, did they have to change her face so much? She was such a cutie and I loved her. Okay, just... Okay, spoilers ending. Just a moment. I want to screw with the people who skip spoiler land. <clears throat> me, 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 me. <clears throat> and I can't believe Spongebob did Squidward like that. Like, he was your friend, man. Why you gotta be like that when all the other fish were... Oh, you're back. That's good. Things got kind of heated while you were gone. Anyway... Now, for the rest of this review, there will be clips, but I'll be keeping it as spoiler-free as possible. But, just to be safe, if you haven't seen Land of the Lustrous, then go do it. I mean, how many recommendations do you need, man? Just go! 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 And then come back so we can discuss sound and sight correlation and its use in the anime. It's okay. I can wait. This video pauses. I think. Depending. Are you gone? They're gone. We good? Yay! Okay then, of course there's the animation, and holy cripes is it good! The entirety of the anime succeeding lies in the fact that it's 3D. I know, that's probably gonna rub some people the wrong way, but it's true. Let me explain why. I'm going to have to wrap this section together with its music and sound effects. These two sections could in no way succeed without the other. What do I mean? Well, just listen to a part of this clip. Sound effects, the tactile, real-life sound that the creatures and objects make would feel out of a place in a 2D animation. Without these sound effects, Land of the Lustrous battles would have less of an impact than they do. To contrast, here's a clip from Steven Universe. Okay, now let's switch these clips. sounds can't be transferred to one another without feeling off. Because of Land of the Lustrous 3D design, the characters exist in a world that's closer to our own, and this gives the sound effects a chance to feel real. And every time a gem shatters or runs barefoot or clashes swords, your brain is willing to expand your probability of disbelief. This leads to the show pulling a viewer in with more ease. Every sound is organic, and it's like you can reach in and touch it. It's intertwining you in its world. And I do believe that this could actually someday be a virtual reality video game. And I honestly look forward to that day because I want to touch her cute face! And that's not even including the hypnotic background music that can sink you into a state of relaxation. I want to buy the music so I can play it while I work. It does everything right, from the bells of the Lunarian, to the violin of the action sequences, to the plucking of simple melodies on a piano, the simple drum beats, and the sound of rushing wind. To top that off, the color palette is simple red, yellow, and blue. Mwah. 
the beauty of simplicity. Now, don't get me wrong, the best part of simplicity is how complex you can make it by rearranging the colors creatively. They say simple is effective, and I am inclined to agree. And that's without even going into the science or the ability of foreign compounds to combine and prosper in environments that may be hostile to them initially, which I'm not going to go into because as far as I could dig up with my googling skills, phospholite doesn't actually exist. I figure it's probably a play on an advanced form of phosphite and its ability to adapt, but along with Antarcticite's affinity for colder temperatures and the middle cards being information on gems makeup and hardness, unlike me, because looking at this stuff and I have no clue what it's saying. Look, the highest grade I ever got in science was a B-. I'm not good at this stuff. So I rely on other people to dig past the basics. But from what little info I am able to process, it's safe to say that the creator did know what they were talking about. Speaking of which, I never did the background info. Land of the Lustrous was created by Haruko Ichikawa and published in 2012 by Kondansha Comics in the monthly afternoon magazine. If you want to check out the manga, books 1 through 4 are currently available, with book 5 coming in March. The anime was directed by Takahiko Kyoku at Orange CG Animation Studio, and of course, aired last season. Unfortunately, it ended up airing on the, who could have guessed it, failed streaming service Amazon Strike, and is licensed by Sentime Filmworks. And I'm sure the series will be available on DVD sometime in the future. You can, of course, watch it now with a Prime Amazon membership, since they took off the double paywall. Hooray! And I also heard that there's a new platform called HiRise that has it now as well, but I can't actually get HiRise where I'm at. So till then, it's either Amazon or other sources. I'm not a good person. All in all, I know I'm not going to be the first or last person to talk about the show. It's laid a groundwork for future shows to work off of, which could result in a similar 3D boom that Pixar caused over here in the US. But that's only speculation, since anime is very 2D structured. In fact, the only way they got this animation to be so successful was to frame it after 2D animation, which blends beautifully, kind of like Papermen. And let's be honest, animation is treated with a lot more respect than it is over here in the Western countries. You know, like you do. Honestly, the Land of the Lustrous has created something truly impressive. A remarkable combination of sound and movement combined with a style that works to its own benefit in a creative and beautiful way. It's just a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. Whee! That was fun! Alrighty, dudes and dudettes, that's all I got for you this time. Feel free to check out my new Patreon page and see if you can get a hold of a few goodies from it. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. I'm not quite sure exactly where I'm going with this channel because I'm kind of a clueless ditz who's just trying to figure life out. But we'll see where it goes from there. Next month, I'm going to be releasing a cover of Ember McLean's Remember. So I hope you remember to check back in. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, that's all I've got for you. See you next time.